There's not much that can stop treasure hunters, especially not Cole Smith and Jonah Martinez. It takes a serious amount of dedication to scan through vast beaches in hopes of finding something valuable buried beneath. However, most of the time, these hunters don't see much value and leave from a hard day of scanning the beach empty-handed. Nonetheless, there's nothing more incredible than hearing that glorious beep from a metal detector that informs you of a possible jackpot. That's precisely what Jonah and Cole heard the one morning they were out searching for treasure. Nothing could have prepared them for what they were about to uncover. The morning that Cole and Jonah had been out on the beach proved to be a glorious one. Although Jonah had spent a good portion of his life dedicated to searching for treasure on southern Florida's beaches, he had never come across something like this. Jonah isn't known to be like most treasure hunters. Every treasure hunter has plans for what they wish to do with their treasures. However, Jonah has plans for the valuables he finds that are entirely different from those of conventional treasure hunters. Unlike many treasure hunters, Jonah Martinez only treasure hunts in his spare time. His standard form of employment involves the customization of motorcycles and cars for clients with specific and unique designs. His friend, Cole Smith, has similar interests as Jonah. Cole Smith is also regularly employed. However, his working hours are conducted as a scuba diving instructor. Although very different careers, both men share the same love for their adventurous hobby of searching for treasure with the help of some metal detectors. Both men are experienced in treasure hunting. Jonah has dedicated almost a third of a century to this hobby. During this lengthy time, he has come up with a bunch of different finds. His collection includes daggers, flatware, even clothes that have been worn by noblemen, and more. Jonah has also made headlines with some of his past finds. An example would be that a time in 2015 when he joined a team of fellow treasure hunters to explore some of Florida's vast beaches. This resulted in the team scoring a treasure of $3.4 million worth of gold coins. Jonah later talked about his experience at a press conference. The Florida Today newspaper retold the story of the team's fantastic discovery. In the article, John explains that he was the one to choose the hunting location where they ultimately struck gold. Jonah went on to say that hardcore metal detectorists is the best way to describe him and the team as. Moreover, he also stated that the purpose of these missions was more about the adventure than the possessions they find. Many people may not believe Jonah when he says that the treasures he finds aren't as important. However, he surely does live by what he says as he makes a strong point not usually to sell the treasures that he finds. However, not all of Jonah's adventures reap massive rewards. He spoke about his exploits from the summer of 2017. This was the year he received pretty devastating returns for his efforts. He stated that the weather plays a significant role, and it didn't seem to be on their side that summer. Jonah went on to explain that the year of 2017 had been the year with the worst weather that the treasure hunters had ever experienced. Nonetheless, he still knew that the outcomes were soon about to change, and he was most certainly correct. The change that Jonah had stated did come indeed. This change occurred in 2020, and with that, Jonah and his friend, Cole, were out once again with their metal detectors. The pair took to Wabasso Beach, that's part of an area known as Treasure Coast. The Treasure Coast is spread across four different Floridian counties. These are Indian River, Palm Beach, Martin, and Stilusi. The name of the coast comes from this particular area's reputation of inhabiting treasures that are commonly found by these metal detectorists. This part of the coastline was named Treasure Coast in 1961. This was the same year that people started finding age-old riches located in the water. It was soon discovered that these treasures were the result of an ill-fated journey taken by the Spanish in the 18th century. This treasure came from the Spanish, transporting their New World riches from Havana, Cuba. The 12 vessels were packed with sparkling jewels, silver, and gold. The value for all of these items was 14 million pesos, and it was being sent back to Spain. A nightmare was faced at sea, and not all of these vessels made it to their destination. The boats initially set sail in July of 1715. However, a terrible hurricane wrecked all but one of the fleet only a week into their voyage. This disaster is considered one of the world's worst disasters at sea in history. 
700 sailors went down with the 11 ships, along with the 14 million pesos worth of precious metals and jewels. The evidence of this disaster is still evident today on Florida's coastline. It seems that the ships sunk close by to Vero Beach. This beach is located within the Indian River County parameters. However, remnants of these ships have landed on the shores of beaches as far as 40 miles away, all of this area making the Treasure Coast. It looks as if the survivors of the wreck failed at trying to recover some of the treasures. It then seems as if this treasure lay on the seabed and was largely forgotten for more than two centuries. After this, the treasure began to re-emerge. The one ship that survived the storm was incredibly lucky. Before it was too late, the crew realized that the sea was going to be far too treacherous. For this reason, they changed direction and landed on Florida's shores. They then set up camp to try and survive the storm. Don Francisco Salmon was the admiral in charge. He decided that some sailors should be sent inland to find people to help. Along with this, sailors were also sent back out to sea to try and recover some of the lost treasures, but to no avail. This wasn't the only failed attempt at retrieving the lost treasure. The shipwreck was a big story, and it attracted lots of attention. The stories of large missing fortune gained a lot of attention, and many crews tried their luck at finding it. However, none were successful. It looks as if another storm was needed to resurface the secrets and hidden treasures that lay in the Treasure Coast waters. It all began when hurricane winds in the 1950s started pushing areas of sand from the dunes that lined the Sebastian Inlet to reveal a shipwreck. Kip Wagner was a local of the Treasure Coast and was the first person to find an actual treasure from the shipwreck. His treasure was a silver coin that was best known as a Spanish peso or dollar. This was a currency that had first been minted in the 15th century. Wagner went on to discover even more treasure. After doing this, he decided to found a group called the Real Eight Company. This group was designed to collect the treasures left hidden from the shipwreck that was now present on Florida's coastline. Schumann and Schultz were two individuals that decided to rename the local beaches containing these relics as Treasure Coast. The rebranding made sense as more treasure hunters were coming to the area in hopes of finding some of the hidden treasure. Renaming the area as Treasure Coast had a tremendous impact. The beaches soon became a hotspot for divers and beachgoers wanting to score a little of the lost treasure. They can search in and out of the tourist season. Cole is based in Fort Lauderdale, and Jonah is located in Port St. Lucie. These men heavily relied upon the use of metal detectors to steer them in the direction of any treasures that may be lingering along the coast. These metal detectors came in very handy on February 28, 2020. This was the day they struck gold. The men began their mission as they usually did. It wasn't long until the beep from the metal detector went off, informing the pair of a potential find. The beeping continued, and the men were eventually left with two dozen coins from the shipwreck. Jonah later confirmed that the men had found 22 of the beautiful coins lost in the Spanish shipwreck. Cole used his expertise and his own evaluation method to come up with an estimate of how long these coins had spent submerged in water. The coins that Jonah and Cole found came with an incredibly large resale price tag. The 22 coins had an approximate value of between $5,000 and $6,000. However, Jonah stated that both men didn't acquire this hobby as a means to make money. Jonah had every right to profit from the discovery he made as he found the treasure on a public beach. However, he said that it's the people of Florida's history, and he, with Cole, weren't looking to profit from it. He was happy just to collect a little piece of history. The law that is implemented in Florida stipulates that any treasure hunters that wish to hunt at sea need to have a permit to search in state-owned coastal areas. This entails that treasure found on state property needs to be split between the treasure hunters and the state of Florida. In Joan and Cole's case, this law doesn't apply. The items found by the men were seen as part of the public domain as soon as these treasures washed up on shore. Thus, both men didn't need to file any paperwork to commence their metal detector treasure hunting session. Although this would be great news for any treasure hunter, Jonah wasn't bothered about all of the financial matters involving his new treasures. This is because his beach calming sessions aren't motivated by money. He enjoys knowing how to read the beach and adding to his collection. 
Jonah has also stated that he won't try to better the appearance of the coins by polishing or any other means. He has promised to leave these treasures as it was found. This is primarily due to it not being about aesthetics for him. For the time being, Jonah is to wishing to continue beachcombing and searching for lost treasures. His goal is to be the one that's behind all of the headline-grabbing lost treasure finds within the Treasure Coast area. He's excited to see what he finds, as he stated that you never know what you may find. Jonah has since shared with his Facebook profile that he wishes to share some of his findings with fellow users of the social media platform, along with his friends. He has shared a few of the coins by putting them on the market to share the history with others.